The object of this video is to show how a combination of Google Forms and Google Sheets can be used to do ranked choice voting. There are three or four um, advanced spreadsheet formulas necessary to accomplish this, but I'll go through everything you need to know to create a ranked choice ballot and a spreadsheet that finds the winner of a ranked choice vote. Uh, first, we'll need choices for the voting. The subject for our vote is going to be about sandwiches. Let's start by entering the choices into a sheet in a Google spreadsheet. I've got an empty folder here to make my spreadsheet. I'm going to create a blank spreadsheet and I'm going to enter my sandwich choices into this spreadsheet. I've got them already typed in. Just going to paste them in. Let's rename this spreadsheet. I'm going to call it one. Now let's use those same choices in our Google form. Go back to my drive and let's create a new Google form. I'm going to, in the first question, um, ask um, the voters to rank their favorite sandwiches. I'm going to choose the multi-choice grid form. I'm going to simply paste in my sandwich choices. And in my columns, I'm going to put in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. I am not going to require a response in each row, but I am going to limit one response per column. And I am going to shuffle the row order so no sandwich has an unfair advantage. Now let's choose uh, a sandwich ranking, uh, sandwich ranks, and then I hit submit. So let me go to the live form. Here's how it looks. Um, I'm going to choose that the Reuben is the best sandwich. Um, and then I like uh, tuna. Oops, sorry, it says not, no, don't select more than one. So tuna is my second choice, egg salad is my third. Let's go with the uh, turkey club being fourth, ham and Swiss being fifth, and peanut butter and jelly being sixth. And then I submit it. Great. I've now submitted that. But let's take a look at that response. Right. There's the responses. Great. But we want those responses to go into our spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and say we're going to, in an existing spreadsheet, put those responses. Okay. That existing spreadsheet is called, I just started called, it's untitled at this point. And you can see it created a new sheet in our, our, um, our sheet. Now, this is only one bit of voting. Um, I have uh, asked this question of a large group of my students. I'll put their answers in as well. So there is their answers. Um, and now let's see what we can do with this. Um, now the problem is in this form, the data is not very useful. We're going to transpose, transpose the data to make it more useful. And to do that, I am going to create a new tab, a new sheet, and I'm going to call that sheet transposed. 
And in that transposed sheet, I'm going to first get my um, sandwich choices in here. Um, my sandwich choices were in the sheet one and starting in the cell A1. And there's the header sandwich. And then there are our six sandwich choices. Um, in this cell, I'm going to go and I'm going to transpose the data from my form responses, which is all of these columns. And there we have all of our responses, but they're, they're flipped sideways. Now we're going to use this in order to find the rankings of our sandwiches, sandwich names in order. And to do that, we're going to do a nifty little trick with a command called sort. Now in sort, we can say, please sort these sandwich names by the ordering that's listed in that column. Oh, and I need to specify that I want them in ascending order. So there you can see those choices that I had made with the Reuben being first and the peanut butter and jelly being last. Let's do a couple more things here. Uh, for example, uh, let's make sure that we're always sorting the sandwich names. So let's make um, our sandwich references absolute. That will allow me to take this cell, take it over here, and we can see that there is, oh, that's me voting. Yep, Turkey Club coming in second that time. Yep, all right. Now, um, I am gonna do this for all of the votes, um, but I don't want the, um, uh, the this, sandwich order to occur in any place there wasn't any votes. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to say only do this sorting if the time set column um, happened to be empty. So if it's not empty, go ahead and do the sort. Otherwise, leave a blank in there. And let's see, does that work for all these cells? It does. I'm going to just hold on the shift key where I do a right arrow, and then I'm going to use control right, control R to fill in all of those cells. Now, I am worried that I might not have enough cells to um, for all my voting. So I'm going to um, add some additional columns here. And when I do that, um, that gives one column. If I hit control Y, um, Every time I hit control Y, it adds in to more columns. I'm going to do until I think I have enough columns for all my votes. Let's go back. Let's get this formula pasted in all of those columns, all of those rows as well. Control R. And we can see that the formula is there as well. Great. So now I've got this data and I can see the sandwich sandwiches in their choice order. I'm gonna go back now to my first cells, my first spreadsheet. And it's going to be here where I'm going to um, grab that data and I'm gonna transpose it back into something that's um, more useful. Um, I'm going to go and say, please transpose the data that's here. And now what I have in this column are all my first choice votes. And if I wanted to find out which sandwich got the most first choice votes, I could write a little formula here. It's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna count that only if the sandwiches 
that are listed starting with cell A12. We're gonna count them only if they match the name of the sandwich right there. Great, peanut butter and jelly got 22 votes all the way through, only one vote for egg salad. But those are counts. What I really want is, I wanna know what percentage of the votes they, they got. So I'm gonna divide this by how many sandwiches were in our votes. And that's gonna be A12 through the bottom of A. And I wanna only count them if the, um, the, in, the contents is greater than a blank string. Great, let's convert that to a decimal. Great, and now I can just pull down. Oh, I got one more thing I need to change here. And that is this reference needs to start at cell A12. So I need to make that 12 an absolute reference before I, before I fell down. There we go, let's see. 12, A12, we're all good there. So there's our, who got the first choice votes. Now, this would be great if one of the sandwiches got a majority, but they didn't. But for rank choice purposes, we only keep on voting until someone gets a majority. To do that second round where we start eliminating the, the, the least voted on options, we are going to um, duplicate this sheet where it has a lot of stuff we want, but then we're going to make some slight changes. So for example, I am no longer going to use the transpose option. Instead, I'm going to go down here in cell 12, and I'm going to use what's called a filter. And the filter says, look at some data and only give me data that meets particular criteria. What data am I going to look at? Well, I'm going to look at the choices that the first voter made. And I'm interested in, oops, I'll just leave it there. Oh, sorry. Let's get rid of the filter for a second. Um, I'm actually gonna put something here, which is what sandwich am I going to eliminate? All right. And right now I'm not gonna eliminate any sandwiches. So it's gonna, command I'm gonna put in here again, it's gonna be filter from these choices. And I wanna do so as long as the choice in there doesn't match what's in cell D2. When I do that right now, I just get the, five, the six sandwiches that were voted on. But, I could, using data validation, choose from this list of sandwiches where I want to get an exact string match. And I could say, you know what? Uh, egg salad didn't do so well. Let's eliminate egg salad. And you can see that egg salad eliminated is one of the vote choices there, All right? Great, and so eliminate whatever's in D2. All right, well, but I can also create more possible things I can eliminate. Let's make them blank for right now. And I could say from our filter command, also eliminate whatever is in cell Actually, it's going to be really similar to this. So I'm just going to copy this. 
eliminate. Uh, what's if it doesn't match what's in D D three or D four or D five or D six. There we go. So let's just try, try that out. Eliminate the egg salad. Eliminate the turkey club. Yep. Eliminate the egg salad. Not for you to eliminate egg salad. Eliminate the peanut butter and jelly. Eliminate the ham and Swiss. Yep. Eliminate the tuna salad. Yep. So we can use these commands to eliminate the things that are in that first voting. Well, that's all great, except um, uh, that's only one vote. We want to have this happen for all the votes. So if I pull down on this, I can do the same thing, but I'm sorry, we gotta do one more thing. We gotta make uh, these references absolute. That when, when we pull down, it will still be looking at that same list of sandwiches to choose which ones to eliminate. There we go. All right, let's try this. Pull this down, see if that works. There's six sandwiches. Let's eliminate the egg salad. And you should see no more egg salads from any of these choices. That's great. And if I eliminate another one, ham and Swiss, you can see all the ham and Swiss go away. So that looks like it's going to work just fine. Change those back to blanks. Let me go ahead and take this cell. I'm going to pull down the shift key while doing the page down. I'm going to fill up this whole column with a fill down. Don't really care about those NAs. And what do we have? We have our ranked choice voting ready to go. Let's see, egg, egg salad, not enough votes to make it to round two, eliminate the egg salad. Salad no longer has any first place votes. Does, peanut, does anyone have a majority? Nope. So let's eliminate tuna salad. Tuna salad goes away. Does anyone have all a majority yet? No, peanut butter jelly getting close, but not a majority yet. Let's eliminate again the last, the, the sandwich in last place, the Reuben. And still not a majority. Let's go ahead and eliminate ham and Swiss. And there we have it. Peter Butter and Jelly now has a majority of the votes. It is our favorite sandwich based on this ranked choice. voting. I hope you found uh, this function, uh, this video uh, helpful. Uh, please note there are limitations. For example, the Google form really can't handle more than eight choices without having to scroll. And again, if you have more than a thousand votes, um, you really need to make sure that you increase your spreadsheets to accommodate all, all the different votes.